Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome your host for this evening's show. He is the pub landlord, Mr. Al Murray. As I would say, if the Germans had won 60 years ago, Guten Abend und willkommen nach Edinburgh und beyond! <laughs> Something else to be grateful for. Now, welcome. You're beautiful, you are beautiful people. Here, yeah, the lady with the glasses, the orange shirt. What's your name, Squire? Ross. Ross! Beautiful British name. What do you do, pal? <laughs> I'm a web developer. A web developer? What? You're a spider? What the fuck are you about? <laughs> Silk dribbling from your ass. Hey! For that image coursing through my mind, you filthy bastard. Hey! <laughs> what have you done today, then? What have you done today? I created a website you for Equinox. Created a website yeah, for Equinox? Yeah, what, what, what? what did that involve? So you typed some stuff up, pasted in some pictures of Nick from somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Is your dad proud of you? <laughs> He's never said so, has he, Ross? <laughs> In fact, since you got that job, you haven't heard from him, have you? <laughs> Good luck to you, pal. You're scruffy and I like you. Now, <laughs> you, you are beautiful people. So, Lanny, you're in an England shirt. God bless you, squire. Hey! Fucking fantastic. What's your name, pal? Spencer. Spencer? <laughs> you're in an England shirt? Yeah. You're not fooling yourself, mate. Look at you. <laughs> hey. Just put this thing on your shirt on. That should sort things out for now. <laughs> You've definitely thought about it. Now, nah, you are. <laughs> You're be you are beautiful people, though. God bless you. Now we got we got a top we got a top night of top entertainment for you. Some of the finest comedy you'll ever see, like Jim, here on Edinburgh and Beyond. But who are our acts tonight? That's a good question, isn't it? Yeah? Isn't it, Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> Thought about it, silver jewellery. <laughs> <laughs> you disgust me. The point is, <laughs> well, the best way to describe these actors is high priests of comedy, true believers in the power of laughter, like Jimmy, disciples of merriment, apostles in the way, the truth, and the light, the temple of comedy that is the Paramount Comedy Channel. And lo, there were four acts who were at Edinburgh, and we did look upon those acts and we thought that they were good. <laughs> and lo, their managers did hold out for too much money. So yay, we found four other acts. <laughs> well, actually, actually, on balance, offered better value for money. And verily, <laughs> and lo, verily, the first of these acts is an angel. Oh yeah, <whistles> fantastic. <laughs> yeah, back pressure build up. It's been a year. So. <laughs> Please, show your appreciation now. Build it up for the opening act. It's Lucy Porter! Oh, thank you. You're in a good mood? Yeah. Yay! So am I. It's lovely to be here. I'm Lucy, and I'm the shortest act on the bill tonight. That's my gimmick. <laughs> All right, I'm only five feet tall, it doesn't matter, because now I'm 32 and I'm starting to get a bit worried about, you know, ageing and that. But I found a brilliant thing I can do to hold back time. And what it is, it doesn't involve surgery or anything. What I do is I just paint my face like a tiger and everyone thinks I'm six. So... <laughs> I tell you what's nice as well is that because this is a nice crowd and sometimes in comedy clubs we go around and we do gigs like uh, recently it's been the sort of hen and stag night season in all the comedy clubs and we've had like I was doing a gig in Manchester like, a couple of weeks ago and we had all these hen nights in we had this one big hen night in from Liverpool right and they were lovely but there was about 50 of them and they were really drunk like even before the evening had started you know have you ever walked into a nightclub and just looked round and thought my god all the women in here have slipped row hip lines their own drinks you know? <laughs> bits out going, take us, it's fine. You know, and it's so sweet, but because I was thinking about it and thinking it's lovely when you watch hen nights because they're very predictable, aren't they? You know, you see a hen night and you can watch them go through all the different stages, can't you? Like, they kind of go, happy, 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 crying on the stairs. <laughs> and there's just always one woman weeping in a pair of bunny ears. <laughs> so, and she's got all mascara around her face and she sort of smells faintly of saliva and jism and, oh, you know. <laughs> 
joking, isn't it, really? But you know, it's interesting, though, because you watch the stag nights, and the stag nights go through stages too, and it's kind of it's similar but different in that the stag nights tend to go happy, 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 horny, fighty, dead. <laughs> People like drinking, don't we? Like, you know, there's all this stuff at the moment about 24 hour drinking. What, are we in favour of 24 hour drinking? <laughs> yeah, there was one old lush who started before I'd even finished the question. Because <laughs> it's interesting for me though, because I live in South East London and it won't really make much difference around my way because <laughs> we already have 24 hour drinking, frankly. The only time the bell rings in my local is when it's time for all the kids to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't got any children, um, I'm a childless person, I haven't got any children because I haven't met the right nanny. Um, but you know, <laughs> I, I, I do, I really love children, but because I sometimes I wonder what would have happened if my life had gone differently. Do you ever do this? Like sometimes if I'm in a really nice area, like if, you know those areas with like lovely big houses, sometimes I'll look at a big house and I'll kind of fantasise that I live, because I live in a little studio flat, and I think, you know, would I be happier if I lived in a big house, you know? I don't know, obviously my life would have had to have gone differently, I haven't really thought it through. I mean, say, I don't know, if I was married to a doctor, um, you know, called Miles, um, you know, who, who's a really gifted surgeon but also writes beautiful poetry. Um, it's funny, actually, we met, we were whitewater rafting in Arizona and um, <laughs> my, my canoe got into difficulties and Miles lifted me out of the water with his big, strong arms. And um, then we married in Hertfordshire because that's where Miles' family are from, but we live in Hampshire now and we're very, very happy. Uh, we've got two delightful children. Oh, we've got Tristram. Tristram's three and he's such a naughty little scamp, he really is. And then there's Jonquil. <laughs> Jonquil's only five, but she's already absolutely potty about ponies. We called her Jonquil after the flower because it's such a lovely shade of blue. And Jonks was born prematurely, so she was the same kind of colour when she came out. Because <laughs> um, I think it is, it's hard having kids, isn't it? Like, I look at some of my mates who've got young children, and I just think, my God, if I wanted to be tired, nervous and broke, I'd get a crack habit, frankly. You know, they're just... <laughs> Because I've had the same conversation with a lot of my friends recently, right, where they come up to me and they go, oh, well, the thing is, Lucy, right, we're just really torn because we kind of feel since we've had the kids, we should move to the countryside. But, you know, it's just really difficult, you know, because obviously we want little raspberry and echinacea to grow up um, <laughs> on an organic diet in the fresh air. But at the same time, we're really torn, you know, because we live in London, we live in Stoke Newington. Oh, it's so vibrant and multicultural, you know. And we're just really worried we're going to move to the countryside and meet a load of racists and bigots. And then you see them after they've moved to the countryside and they're like, bring back fox hunting, fuck the gypsies, vote Kilroy, you know. <laughs> you think, well, maybe little raspberry and echinacea are going to be healthier, but that's terrifying because they're being raised by Nazis now. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I absolutely love kids, but it is parents that I have the problem with. Like, the other day I was on the bus near where I live, and um, someone was kicking the back of my seat, right, and it was just a bit annoying. And so I turned around to see who was doing it, and behind me was, well, what turned out to be a human child, um, but what at first glance looked for all the world like a pit bull in Burberry, frankly. <laughs> just, you know, this horrible little, probably about seven, right, and it had a McDonald's Happy Meal, right, and it was kind of fisting this McDonald's Happy Meal into the bleak, stygian abyss of its gaping maw, and then, you know, and there was just this sound, and I couldn't tell whether it was the noise of the Happy Meal being ingested or the sound of my ovaries shriveling as I looked at it, right? And it was, but, And I do love the children, I believe the children are our future. So I thought, I'll be nice. And um, so I turned around and I said, look, sweetheart, I'm really sorry. Would you mind not kicking the back of my seat? Because it's a bit irritating, right? That was all I said. And, the, you know, I thought that was fine. But this turned out to be the cue for its mother, right? Who was a very pleasant looking young woman, a bit orange, but, you know, fine. <laughs> but this turned out to be the cue for her to unleash this torrent of abuse. I mean, she was going, you fucking bitch, you fucking bitch. You've got no fucking right to tell my child off. My little asbo's a lovely little boy. He's done nothing wrong, you know? And I was just, kind of, I was upset, but I was angry as well. Because I just thought, you know, you're one of these people who go on about your rights, but you've got no idea about your responsibilities, have you, to that child, to the rest of us, you know, you'd be bringing this child in, and you're reading the Daily Star, so presumably you're one of these people who thinks we shouldn't fund HIV treatment for asylum seekers, but to be honest, I'd much rather pay for that than pay for treatment for the type 2 diabetes child so that you get to feed it on shit, I hope it dies, right? <laughs> obviously I didn't actually say that because I can't really express my anger and I don't like getting stabbed, but, uh, you know, <laughs> but actually, I feel like I've shared, it's not, you've been a lovely, sharey, lovely audience, um, so a lot of comedians like to end on a laugh, but I find that a bit of a cliche. Um, so uh, <laughs> what I like to do is just share a motivational quotation with my audiences. And the one I've picked for you is, if you judge people, you have no time to love them, right? Which um, I thought was a lovely sentiment, but more importantly, I wanted to share those words with you because those words were said by Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And um, I actually think that we can all learn something from Mother Teresa. Um, and that thing is you've got to moisturise, OK? Just, <laughs> she was wonderful, but she had skin like a scrotum, didn't she? So have a wonderful evening. Thank you for having me.